Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves in Bastrop, Texas. Now as we get closer to Halloween, it of course becomes a fantastic time to watch some horror movies. And one of my personal favorites, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was filmed right here in this small town. Much like that iconic masterpiece, we begin, much as they did, here at a little gas station that's serving up some delicious barbecue. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, released on October 11th, 1974, and the horror genre would never be the same. This terrifying tale is about five young teens and the misadventures they get into in the rural plains of Texas. Now, the movie presents itself as a true story, but this actual turn of events never happened quite like they say. While Leatherface is heavily influenced by the famous serial killer Ed Gein, there never was an actual Leatherface. At least, not that we know of. Now, this is the actual place where they filmed the scenes for the movie, but now you can come and stay here in one of these nice little cabins you can actually rent out Texas Chainsaw Massacre from them to watch as you make your way through the creepy night. But let's check out inside. It only makes sense that this has become a haven for horror movie memorabilia of all shapes and sizes. If it's horror related, you're gonna find it here. You can pretty much buy anything from any scary movie. That's not to say it doesn't stay true to the movie, as you most certainly can still get barbecue here. However, it is actually made of animals, and there's no human meat on the menu. Looking back on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's almost a miracle that it even exists. There's barely any exposition, it is very much a movie that just jumps straight into the situation and what's happening. A funny detail about the movie is that even though it's recognized as a horror slasher classic that spawned so many gory bloody movies, this movie itself really didn't have that much blood. A lot of the gruesome killing and bloody mess was done off screen. It was implied, but you didn't actually see most of it. That's because the director, Toby Hooper, was trying his best to aim for a PG rating. Now this was in the days before PG-13 came along, so it went straight from PG to R. It seems, no matter how hard he tried though, this movie still ended up in R territory. Another fun tidbit that a lot of people don't know is the movie originally wasn't called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That name sprung up pretty last minute before the release. Originally, it was going to be called either Head Cheese, which you're probably familiar with if you've seen the movie, or Leatherface, after the very iconic villain. However, ultimately Texas Chainsaw Massacre won out as the title, and honestly, I feel like that worked a lot better, considering they were trying to go for the documentary, true story kind of feel. After you looked over the merchandise and seen the choice meats for a human, you can step outside and take a picture of yourself hung up on meat hooks. That's a great picture to send out to the family. 
Or you know what? Maybe even your Christmas card could be shot right here. But one of my favorite things here was definitely this bench out front that's in honor of everyone who was involved with Texas Chainsaw Massacre who is no longer with us. There are some very iconic things right here, including a chainsaw, and then plaques that have the names and pictures of those who have already passed. A very nice memorial that I'm sure they would be proud of. Definitely 10 out of 10, very cool place. But as I mentioned, the whole movie was filmed in this part of Texas. And if we take a little bit of a drive, there's another location I think we should check out. We're now about two hours away from Bastrop in Kingsland, Texas. You may recognize this building behind me. This house is where the Sawyers actually lived. This has also been turned into a restaurant, appropriately, called Hoopers. Let's go check it out. Though this house was moved from its original location, it has been lovingly taken care of to look exactly like it did when they filmed here. That's definitely a better choice than having it demolished or something silly like that. The budget for this movie, even if reflecting today's numbers, was very, very low. So keeping filming locations to a minimum was crucial to get everything done underneath the amount they wanted to spend. Now one resident of the house who isn't too scary. This is Tuxie. This is the house cat. How are you Tuxie? Very friendly. And you can find Tuxie in this nice little home right here. Now besides Tuxi, there is still plenty of things to see that aren't too scary. This has certainly been made more of a celebration of the movie, and luckily not a recreation of the movie. Even though the house was pretty decrepit and dirty when they filmed there, the inside is much nicer now, and you're going to find iconic things all over the place. I really liked a lot of these art pieces, including the beginning intro talking about how this is a true story, lots of autographed pictures, some from Leatherface himself, and other amazing things that any fan of this movie is really going to love. In the same way that this movie influenced countless slasher movies to come after it, it seems it inspired a lot of artists. There are plenty of movie poster-esque things hanging around, with Leatherface being a very popular subject. And then there's some really cool framed behind the scene photos and still frames from the movie itself, hanging up to really give you that ambiance and feel. This was a great piece with autographs of most of the main characters, as well as a few key workers behind the scenes, such as Hooper himself. And you know it couldn't be Texas Chainsaw Massacre without an actual chainsaw just kind of hanging around. Now, in the movie, they did use a real chainsaw, and a couple of times it got a little dangerous. They just kind of hoped for the best. Theming continues on the menu, especially with the drinks here. You can get a Grandpa Sawyer. There was a lovely leather face right there to watch you while you eat. And then if you head over to the bar, you could see one of his iconic skin masks. Now, he actually had a couple of these. If you notice during the movie, he wears three different ones while he's doing his uh, daily duties. And even a crazy house full of killers has got to take advantage of selling some t-shirts.
And since we're here, we got to explore the whole house. So let's see if there's anything interesting on the second story. Well, a little empty, but from what we understand, there are plans in place to make this even more exciting and bring more Texas Chainsaw Massacre to life. Personally, I for one, can't wait to see how they utilize this space and make it an even cooler horror destination. Well, adventurers, for the time being, it looks like we've escaped, but definitely don't want to press our luck, so I think we'll leave things here. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below where you'd like to see us go next. All of it really helps us out, and if you're interested in getting a postcard every single month, and access to some bonus episodes, you can also check out our Patreon. Link will be below. My name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. Thanks for tagging along. We'll see you next time.